Hola, hi kings and queens. Um, today is Wednesday. We're in the middle of the week, or to some people, they consider this the middle of the week. <clears throat> I pray that you woke today with much zeal, expectancy for God's finest favor. And today we're going to read from Job 23.10. I'm going to wait a few more moments. <clears throat> Hi, Queen. Thank you for joining. And today we're reading from Job 23.10, which is, When he tested me, I will come forth as gold. Hi. And the title for today is your grace for this test word <laughs> we have grace to extend grace to others hi my love um okay so i'm gonna open in prayer father in the name of jesus we honor you we thank you father for air in our lungs we thank you for life today we thank you for the opportunity to surrender our life our will and everything father not to your will father for to align us with your word I pray that I as may um, speak through the power of the Holy Spirit that has been invested into me, um, that I speak selflessly, never selfishly. I pray, Father, that everyone leaves forever transformed from your word, Lord, that any time that they read your word, that they're forever transformed, awakened, educated, to have much insight, revelation, clarity, knowledge, wisdom beyond our years of age, to create generational wealth, to create generational blessings, and to break generational cursings by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Father, for everything that you have for us, especially for extending grace to us, to extend grace to others. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you. And um, above everything, Father, just thank you for protecting us, giving us much peace and prosperity. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Job lost his family and his fortune in a single day. Yet looking back, he wrote, when he, tested, when he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. It takes much more heat to produce gold than it does to produce tin. So which of the which of the two do you want to be? To enjoy the blessing God has in mind for you? You've got to pass life test. In the early days of television programming, schedules were routinely interrupted by a 30-second test of the emergency broadcast system. I remember that. <laughs> And those tests are a lot like the ones that come into our lives unscheduled, unwelcome, and they always seem to come at the worst possible time. <laughs> but unlike television test patterns, life's tests don't, don't last for 30 seconds and then go away. No, they can last weeks, years, and in some cases for a lifetime. And the reason why, why we, why may never be completely clear to us or to you. However, there's an aspect of the test you can control, how you respond to it. The truth is tests are an invaluable, integral, and indispensable part of your spiritual growth. Without them, you'll never grow and mature as much as you need to. And it's how you handle your test that decides your testimony. Word. Paul writes, every detail works to your advantage and to God's glory. More and more grace, more and more praise. So we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. 2 Corinthians 4.15 mm -hmm. Bottom line, you're graced for this test. What I was learning today uh, and in the past week, what I've been learning or weeks is that... Um, as I mentioned, we're loved to love others. We have grace to extend grace to others. We have mercy to extend mercy to others. But what God, um, bear with me, sorry. But what God has been revealing to me um, and a lot of education that I've been learning is that when we don't extend grace to others or we don't extend forgiveness to others, it's going to affect our heart. Because whatever it is that we're feeling, it's going to come out of the mouth. It's going to come out of our actions. As I've always said, that if you're feeling sick in your heart because you've been hurt, betrayed, you have bitter and you're holding grudges, um, it's going to affect us hugely. And it's going to affect, affect us so much in our spiritual sense, physical and everything because we all have um, this king in us or a queen in us and we are supposed to reign responsibly which means that everything that god has given us access or blessed us with authority over you know it's going to everything that we do and say and create or don't create or uproot or plant it's going to come from what stands from the heart because 
whatever you're passionate about is what you're going to pursue. Whatever your, wherever your heart is, is going to influence your decisions. And I will tell you that if you're doing everything that God has called you to, or you're trying to get to your God ordained destiny or, um, create or elevate like elevation or prosperity. If you are not operating in a pure heart or steadfast spirit, you will not fulfill what God has called you to fulfill. And with that, you know, we have to extend grace to others, whether I, I will tell you that the greatest testing that I have experienced personally is, you know, being betrayed by people that, you know, I love so dearly or I value so dearly or I would allow them to influence some of my decision making because my heart was there. And what God has shown me is that we always want to blame somebody or something for something that's been bad done to us which i'm not saying that it's not someone's fault yes being betrayed and all these things they are they happen that's something that's inevitable in our lives but what god is showing me is that when you forgive them especially the ones that you feel like no there's just no absolute way that i could forgive this person when you forgive them you're you're not releasing you know what they've done to you the years of pain or you know the sleepless nights or the stress whatever it is that they have taken from you that made you feel betrayed whether it's trust or whatever it is that's between you and god you know what you have been robbed of or what people have taken from you but what i'm telling you is that it's not when you forgive them it's not like releasing those things because it's a process because anytime you think about the things that have been done to you you know you can god can give you the grace but it's a process because it's also a choice but you will think of the things that have been done to you and they can resurrect, you know, anger inside you, bitterness and all of these things. So it is a process to forgive people. But what I've learned is that if we don't get healing and we don't extend, you know, and, and I'm not saying that because you forgive them, go back and allow them in your life. No, you have to, you have to, as I mentioned yesterday, you have to divorce and you have to break up from relationships because it's not because you haven't fully forgiven them yet, but it's because it's not a safe place for you. And when it's not a safe place for you to go back and become vulnerable or to go back and trust them with whatever it is that you trusted them with and they took it or they robbed it or they betrayed you with it, that exact thing that they robbed you from, whatever it is, you know, God will give it back to you in, in a different sense. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but what I'm telling you is that it's not releasing all that pain. It's releasing to the Lord to let them, let God deal with them. And I would tell you that I have been put in situations, especially in the season of my life, that I felt like I could never forgive people that have betrayed me so bad or have done some things to me that I was just like, absolutely never. That's it. I have to draw the line like Moses did. But what God is showing me, as he's mentioned, that we forgive 77 times. You might have to forget the same person 77 times or more. You know, because it's a process and I'm not saying that you're going to continue giving them what you gave them access to. No, but the thing is that they may probably do it repeatedly because whatever it is that they need to learn, that's between them and God. But when you choose to forgive and extend grace to others where you need grace at times, that's where God will elevate you and prosper you in those areas. Because it's important that we extend what God blesses us. We are blessed to bless others. If he's given us forgiveness, we forgive others. However, you forgive them and at times you have to break up because they haven't, you know, they haven't gotten healing in that area where they cause betrayal to you. And it's not a safe place. You know, you go and you tell them something and then they go and they tell someone else. And then it gets back to you. And this is what I've learned. <laughs> Is that when you are forgiving others or, you know, many, many times, maybe it's just me, but there's people that know secrets about you, secrets that you don't want other people to know. And what God has revealed to me is I'm going to be completely transparent with you is that God has revealed to me is that Esme, if you're saying things or you're doing things that you don't want nobody to know about, it's important that you don't do those things. Not only because you don't trust those people, because they always say we, we, I always say too, we allow access to people and we have to be very, very careful. Hi, Queen. We have to be very careful where we allow access to people because we can become vulnerable and we can ask for prayer in a certain area. And then these people, not only, maybe they don't pray for you, but they go tell other people, you know, what, what skeletons you have in your closet. But what God has revealed to me is that when you keep your closet free of any skeletons, when you obey God, because I would tell you many times that I have been betrayed. I have gotten that little like, watch out, watch out. But I shouldn't have done those things to begin with. And this is what has really, really taught me that Esme, if people have secrets about you that you don't want others to know, don't do them. 
And there's things that I have done in the past that I cannot, like, I can't change what I did in the past. Every day we're changing. Every day it's a process. Every day we're evolving. Every day we're changing. Sometimes we backtrack and we do things that we're not proud of. However, take those things to God. If you need wise counsel around you, godly people to, to pray with you about these things, you know, take it to people that you know that they're going to pray for you when you become vulnerable because there will be a lot of people that will betray you. There will be a lot of people that will talk about you. I have learned, like, I, I always wonder to myself, why is it that so many people want to know so many things about me? I'm like, if they want to know anything about me, they can straight up go to my YouTube and I'll tell you myself. But what I realized is that there's people that may not like you, but they still want to know about you. And I'm always telling like my husband, like, I'm so free. Like, if you want to know anything about me, you can ask. If God gives me the okay to tell you, then I will. Because my life is a testimony. Everything I have been through is a testimony. But I will tell you that. When God calls me to be transparent, there's times when I don't understand. And then there's times where I'm just like, I'll, I'll try to feel it. I, I, I'm not try to feel, but I'll start feeling like a little fear. And then I'm like, Lord, like, you know, why do I fear? People talk about me, whether I'm doing good or bad. Maybe it's just me. Maybe nobody else gets talked about. But I get talked about whether I'm doing good or bad. And I will tell you more than half the time, I'm trying to do good by others. I'm trying to do good by me. I'm trying to do good by God. It's, it's, it's always trying and fulfilling it. But I will tell you that... The Lord <laughs> took the blinds off and gave me great wisdom. And it's like, Esme, if you don't want people to talk about you, that you, the past, we can't change it. But if you don't want people to talk about you, like, and people are still going to talk. They're going to make stuff up about you. God ordained things like this. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. He ordained enemies to be your footstool. So therefore, you could be elevated to the next level. So you could be elevated to the next relationship that's going to prosper you. I don't know. All I do know is that if we don't want people to talk about us, it keeps us from doing things that we don't want to be talked about. However, there's another thing, that the people will talk about you whether you're doing good or bad. However, live in a way that honors God. So when people do talk about you or try to spread lies about you, your life and your reputation and the way you live, it won't be believable because people are like, no, I know her. And even at times when I have heard things from people that... I'm like, I don't know if that person would do that. Like, I don't know. That's God right there giving me that. No matter what they have done, they're a, they're a child of the Most High too. And even if they betrayed me, I pray that God gives me Christ-like vision to see them the way he would want. And that's how I get myself caught up in a lot of things at times. But right now I'm having revelation. And thank you, Lord, for that insight. Is that when you're doing the will of God and people are talking about you, just extend grace to them either way. And I always say like, well, if they're going to talk about me, I would rather them talk about me than talk about someone else because I'm so used to people talking about me that I can handle it. I, I always, I, I, I've always had people talking about me. I've always had people say stuff about me and it's cool. Like, I, I don't, I don't care. I'm learning that if people would rather talk about me and hurt me, that's cool. I would rather take the pain than for them to talk about someone else. And um, that's just where my heart is at. You know, um, I've heard people tell me like, oh, you go and you pray for these people. I don't know if you're spiritually strong enough to pray for that person, you know, because then they might, the, the demons or whatever you're trying to get, you know, uh, them freed from, they can latch on to you. And it's crazy because when they told me this the other day, I said, I would rather fight those demons for them than they fight them. And that's where God has told me, you know, my husband, my king is a firefighter. and He lays his life daily for others strangers he lays his life you know and i don't always know if he's gonna come home i pray that he comes home safely but i know that his line of work is laying his life for others and um what god just dropped in me right now thank you lord is that i lay my life for others too it may not always be in the physical sense but i lay my spiritual life for others so if you're battling demons i'm gonna pray for you if god lays in my heart to lay hands on you you know, I'm going to do that. And I get emotional because I didn't realize that until right now. And um, I thank y'all because even right now that I lay my, um, I lay my, <laughs> I lay my life out for you to know that my life is a testimony. Every test that I have been through is a testimony, how I share much wisdom with y'all. And um, even if you're watching me and you talk about me, thank you. Because I pray that my life somehow blesses your life. I pray that my transparency where I become vulnerable in situations or experiences or issues that I have that, you know, I may be ashamed of that they bless your life for you to know that whatever's between you and God, only you know that. 
but I too walk through the valley of shadow of death and most of the time it's to lay my life for others and I lay my life spiritually daily for God to use me as a vessel and as a testimony to others to know that yeah I'm up here with Jesus joy and then sometimes I'm down in the dumps and then sometimes I'm frustrated and then sometimes I'm experiencing betrayal that I feel like <laughs> what but I will tell you that I can smile through a lot of it because I know that whatever it is God called me to share or whatever it is that people know about me nothing happens without God's approval many things happen and they harm us you know spiritually physically or mentally but I will tell you that when you allow God to be your strength in any weakness you have there's no one or anything that could take that peace that God gives you it's a purposeful intentional peace that only can come from Jesus therefore it extends other things to you which is grace mercy kindness Jesus joy be a joy to others be favored to others and you too will have favor refresh your refresh yourself in the word of God refresh others and you too will be refreshed spiritually physically or mentally whatever it is that the Lord knows that you need bring it to the Lord and I will tell you as this says when he has tested me I will come forth as gold because God has tested me in areas too where people ask me questions and and you know I, I notice that people start asking me more in detail because I answer but you know people want to know so much and I'm like why Lord why Lord but when you're living your life as a testimony for God People want to know because they know you're vulnerable. They know you're transparent. And I know many people say, be very careful where you limit access. You know, and for me, it's like I'm praying on that area because my heart gets me in situations where people that I allow access or over allow more access. But just right now, as God is revealing to me, nothing is an accident. Everything is intentional. And if people talk about me, I guess I can take it right because <laughs> I'm up here being vulnerable. I'm up here being transparent about my life. But I know that God is using it for a greater glory and whatever I walk through that even though I'm ashamed of, I pray that I have healing and I think that that's what we should all do. I pray in the name of Jesus that when you hear anything about somebody, you don't add to it. Don't add fuel to the fire. Let's pray. Let's let's send a heavenly prayer for that person because one day it could be us and if you extend grace to not transfer chisme or gossip to other people grace will be extended to you too so therefore someone can nip it in the bud and be like hey i don't want to talk about that person let's pray for them and i know many times that i mentioned that when people are gossiping many times people don't like that because that's not what they want to hear but i will tell you even myself that i have become vulnerable in places where i'm like telling somebody okay like let's let's pray for this person i have realized that not everybody cares about praying for people people want to know your business they want to know your shames your guilt they want to know what you know you're flawed in and it's crazy because they only want to know for even evil intentions and i will tell you that if you're in that area or you're around people that are like that pray rebuke it in the name of jesus rebuke any diabolical force in the name of jesus i pray over each and every one of you that you recognize and have spiritual discernment of where god tells you hey stand for the righteous or hey stand for that person that they're talking about even if that person did you dirty stand for them because I would tell you, God will honor you in those areas where if they feel the most uncomfortable is. And I would tell you that right now I have a loved one fighting for her life. And all the times that I extended, you know, forgiveness or even for other people that have passed on and I extended forgiveness to them. I thank God that I extended forgiveness. I, I'm glad that I reached out and checked on them. I'm glad that God gave me that strength to forgive people when they've done dirty things to you or bad things to you, betrayed you, that you extend grace to them because that honors God. And even where you feel like, I don't want to extend love. I don't want to love them. They hurt me. Saying, you know, asking for forgiveness is not going to take years of pain or days of pain or sleepless nights. It's not going to take none of that away. But I will tell you that it's very hard to forget. People say to forget. I don't, I don't think that, you know, I truly believe that God can heal you in an area where you will never remember how that pain felt like when they betrayed you. That's how good God is. God is the only one who can have the power to forget what we do when we sin no one else does so when people say oh yeah i forgive and forget no you'll never forget god is the only one that has that power however i pray that you don't remember the pain that you walk through so therefore god can heal you and you know you remember like what you did you cry you you couldn't sleep but that pain you won't recognize what it feels like by the blood of jesus i pray for each and every one of you to really work on your heart because if you don't work on your heart it's going to affect that king that god called you to be or evolve into so in jesus name i pray you're blessed uh i thank you for trusting and investing your time um with me daily and if you feel led or free to share this video please do and i'm praying in the name of jesus that you're graced for every test and that you have much knowledge, wisdom, revelation beyond your years of age or understanding and much protection that surpasses all your understanding for your family's bloodline. So thank you.
reign responsibly and remember you're created to create um i'll see you soon tomorrow i don't know if i'm gonna be going live anymore on sundays but i'll see y'all tomorrow so in jesus name be blessed reign responsibly and i uh, i'm in prayers for each and every one of you oh and today i'm wearing the malila lash from the founders collection and the lord and esme um beauty holy lash uh line bye